The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. Those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, as the only Saviour, because there are no gods on this earth apart from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If there are any other gods, they are nothing but demons which have been exercised in the form of gods in their form of religion. Because religion being Satan's a trump card in order to deceive this mankind not to believe and enjoy that great salvation which has been given for us. Because already Satan being doomed to destruction into the eternal lake of fire. Its execution will take place after the millennium rule and certainly will be confined at those who not believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ along with those unbelievers. They will be knowing at that time what they have lost by not believing this great Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth. No one is been like him. No one is there apart from him. He is our rock. He is our salvation. He is our Lord God. So certainly those who have not believed, says Isaiah chapter 66 verses 22 through 24, we shall look upon them and they will certainly see what is their fate in the hell of their fire. Therefore, dear brethren, peace be to be those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bible is the only mind of Christ, the word of God, the voice of the Spirit. And the word of God doesn't really lie. It doesn't lie at all. It is truth 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 always it stands in the truth because of his immutability and veracity the word of the lord can never lie it is not a mind to change his word it is not a mind to alter his words or neither it is a mind to lie the word of god is truth from eternity past to eternity future from eternity eternity it is the same therefore every one who has been there on this earth should believe bible as the only mind of christ being communicated for us through the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in the inspiration by writing them the truth therefore we have been given this second grace upon us in order to understand after only when we enjoy the first grace the first grace being salvation the second grace being in our hands this completed canon of scripture there is no replacement for this truth the wisdom of this world the cosmos diabolicus thinking the rationalism or empiricism attitude of those believers who are walking through or unbelievers are walking through on this earth of this human mankind when compared to each and every word of the word of the Lord which has been given for us in the completion canon of scripture. That is what I meant to say about the Protestant Reformation, not about the Catholic Reformation. This completed canon of scripture which we hold in our hands, the 66 books are enough for us certainly to reveal what is our fate on this earth. What are we? Where are we? And how are we be given to this earth? And what are we to this earth like salt and the light and how are we to be the effective ambassadors if you are not having any spiritual gift don't think you don't have any spiritual gift every believer has been given at least one spiritual gift the guilt the gift of health the gift of administration the gift of hospitality these gifts are at least been provided for you and apart from this you cannot say i don't have any other gift but besides this every believer has been given commonly priesthood every believer has been given commonly ambassadorship to execute this work and every believer has been given to become king in the lord and in order to become king in the lord he has to write at least once the entire bible therefore dear brethren you need to know you have at least one spiritual gift and every believer has been given to this earth in order to make sure by holding forth the word of the Lord and walking among the midst of this perverse and crooked generation, holding forth his light, shining like a light luminaries and exposing the truth and we are being called for a greater work in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 9 and following to tell for us that you are not of this darkness but rather you are being called for them to into a gyro ministry to cause them to understand what is the dangerousness of their salvation to cause them to understand for a believer what is the dangerousness of their spiritual life 
life if they do not learn this word of the Lord if they do not execute in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit if they do not even come close to think that without the mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit this life is nothing on this earth they cannot even call our Lord as Lord they cannot even understand what is the mind of Christ therefore dear brethren you cannot learn his mind by being thought of your human intellectual reasonings the only thing which our Lord God Almighty desires on our part is that we should be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit without this you will never know what is the true communication power which has been given for us from the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit it is only Lord God the Holy Spirit can reveal the scriptures for us and in your human energy you cannot and never learn what is the truth in Christ what is his mind and what is his word Therefore, dear brethren, we the church's believers have been given to be indwelt by Lord God the Holy Spirit, irrespective of your wretchedness, irrespective of your manner of life, irrespective of your grieving and squelching and lying to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, the status quo of permanence of indwelling Lord God the Holy Spirit in you is permanent, but the filling is temporary. Whenever you sin either by thought, word or deed, you lose that fellowship. But Lord God, the Holy Spirit will be residing in you, but it will never control you. That is the meaning of losing the fellowship. And every true believer has been called to be constantly live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and yield unto the fruit of the Spirit. Every believer has been called for that. He doesn't have any chance to excuse or to claim excuse at the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, it has been called for us to look, to think, to understand. This spiritual phenomena demands, number one, to be born again. And not only does it stop there. After being born again, you need to be staying in the divine dinosphere to learn this word. And to be in the divine dinosphere, the privacy of your priesthood, which is given for you to confess your sins and get back into the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, where are we in this church age? Have you ever known what is your privilege in Christ to be called? Have you ever known that you have your high and holy polity of privileges ever given in the past, never given in the future, but it has been given only for us in this church? And Satan knows and understands all these things. Therefore, he does for you not to learn the word, not to consider about the truth, not to think about the word of the Lord. The saddest part is many people do not even know that the spiritual manna which we are taking every day is a divine provision for us. And in order to take this spiritual manna every day which is a true divine provision for us, we need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And though you sin, Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. Do you know why? Because you are given the privacy of priesthood so that you will come back by the confession of your sins through rebound. And why Lord God the Holy Spirit resides in you or still keeps you alive in this earth even after salvation, when you grieve and squelch and lie to the ministry, do you know why? Because of His grace. Every believer has been called to yield MGG, maximum glorification for Lord God Almighty. There is no excuse. You cannot claim to tell to the Lord, I was not aware about the spiritual gifts. I was not aware that I was an ambassadorship. I was not aware that I am a royal priest, I am a royal king and a royal ambassador, all these things. And you are not aware that you are an aristocrat of heaven. That meant to say, Lord will tell certainly for you. You are ignorant. You have not desired to know it. No excuse. You may tell odd infinite reasons not to learn this word, not to grow up in this word, not to consider and to give number one priority for this truth. Those reasonings may be justifiable for men, but in the sight of God, every reason, every thought which you think, every motive behind that thought, Lord knows why are you thinking that thought. Moses would have told, why for me, let the bush be burning, I will leave it off. Did he say that? He said, I want to go and see, then Lord called him. It is your desire. And that desire will be yielded the fruit. And in Jeremiah 3.15, we find the great prayer of all time. As our Lord 
listens to them, he tells, I shall send you shepherds after my own heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That is the true work of the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, dear brethren. And when this man is teaching the word, do you know what happens? He certainly divides the crowd. People will not listen to him. That's what we find in John chapter 10, verses 18 and following in the great discourse till to the verse number 30. These people have not believed the Lord's word. Some of them said he was mad, he's having demon, he was devil. But others said if he had demon, how can he heal the blind man? And then our Lord ends the discourse by telling me and my father are one. And the people certainly departed and they took stones to beat him. What does the truth do? Truth always divides from lies. It calls for suppression. It calls for true righteousness in God. Dear brethren, before learning what is prepared for us in today's church age, we shall certainly have a word of prayer of our privacy in the priesthood and get back and learn the word. Father, as we are going to study this word, we are using the rebound principle in order to make sure that Lord God, the Holy Spirit controls and teaches to us the mind of Christ, which is so essentially needed in the present Christendom, without which, Lord, these people are led into astray, without which, Lord, they are really destroying their own spiritual life at the cost of expensable realm. They are just going for the cheap things on this earth. Help us to certainly train them up in your word so that, Lord, they could be enlightened. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So the separation between righteousness and unrighteousness, which has to be so thoroughly taught for us in the enlightenment of the scriptures. Dear brethren, you and I have been called in this unique dispensation of the church age not to waste our time in useless and worthless things. You know what are you in Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 13 and 14 teaches to us a great principle of a lesson. Ending up in verse 15. It says, be you not becoming to be equally yoked with unbelievers. What partnership you have between righteousness and lawlessness. That is what metakoyo, that meant to say for you, partnership. It is not fellowship. Partnership. With whom we need to have our partnership on this earth. It has to be in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to have that partnership with Christ in us. The fellowship which has been translated in KJV is not right. It has to be partnership. Do you think righteousness and at the same time lawlessness can go hand in hand? Never. Likewise, the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when they are being controlled by using rebound, so that we are being called to live in the Spirit, to be controlled of the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, and to yield unto the fruit of the Spirit, not to grieve the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to squelch, not to lie. Do you think they both can go hand in hand? They cannot. Where there is light, there is no darkness. Every believer has been called for a gyro so that he can become an alanco to reprove with conviction so that the guilty which you had should be cleansed out. And you should further live a life, a life of true righteousness in Christ. The greatest discord which certainly given for us in John chapter 10 verses 18 through 30 teaches to us how our Lord divides the word rightly. Sticking to the point and telling certainly of truth what he was in Christ. And today many believers do not understand. Far less the congregation can know that they are royal priests and royal kings for Lord God Almighty. The believers have not known really to look, to think, to consider what the pastor teacher is teaching, whether he is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or is he in the fellowship of sin, 
Or is he in the partnership of lawlessness? How can you say he is lawlessness in the partnership? Without rebound, you are certainly a lawless one. Far less you can think you can handle the word and you can tell to them, this could be true, that could be true. All those things will come from your emotion, from your mentality of reasoning, from your points of your study. Because whatever you feed to your memory, that is what it is going to come out. But Lord God Almighty doesn't use that. Lord God Almighty takes that which is right and which is true and which is accurate and it communicates for your edification in Christ so that you should know your high calling in Christ and you should execute that great protocol plan of God in Christ for his superior glory wherewith you has been given such kind of a great investment upon this church age believers high and holy privileges of all time. That's for if you grievance, quench and lie, then to let God the Holy Spirit indwelling is permanent in you, but it loses fellowship with you. That's where the word would come, fellowship there. The partnership there. It loses to fail you. Your soul will be impressed with the words of this world. And your soul doesn't have time to gather the only word which has to be in you, which is nothing but the mind of Christ. Every believer has been certainly designed to have his mind by changing his mind to renovate his thinking and he is not involved to take the things of this earth. The things of the earth he has to reprove in the light of truth. Expose them so that he can really make the true witnesses of his word by honoring his word above his name and that will be the ultimate work of a pastor teacher followed by his, followed by his out called church. The church which is only loyal for the word of God. And whenever the people come with their thoughts, with their thinking, with their religion books, since you know the truth, you will certainly understand and you will tell them this is not so. And you will certainly correct them if they listen to it, if they not leave them. You have to go to teach and get every thought into captivity for Christ because every believer has to be made perfect technion. So when you have your partnership with lawlessness rather than to be in righteousness, how do you think they both go hand in hand? How can you have your communion between light and darkness? You cannot. And furthermore, it has been called, what agreement does Christ has with Belial? Or what part do believers have with an unbeliever? The four Greek words, first one for partnership, metakoio, and the second one for communion, koinonion, and the third one for agreement, symphonesis, and fourth one for part, that is what, what part you have, that is marriage. Dear brethren, now you have to think and you have to understand. By the time you need to be the great communicators of the word of the Lord, what are you doing? Therefore, we find in our churches the cleptest crowd, the lestest crowd and the misthoughtest crowd, rather than finding ideal shepherds. The true pastor, teacher, bona fide gift, what does he do? He train you up so that what you have to be, you have to be mature because the doctrine of demons are been influencing in our churches much more than the time when our Lord was available on this earth. Though we have the completed can of scripture, the first thing what Satan does is to impress you to lies. He doesn't teach you the truth. It doesn't differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. It tells you can live 10% of righteousness with God and 90% of lawlessness and because of the grace of God he is certainly going to correct you. So need not worry, Lord is there for you to correct these things. That's what Satan teaches to you. You can have communication with darkness. You can have communion with darkness and light together. Need not worry. You can learn these things in this manner because you have not known what is the truth. And it will say you are still drinking milk. And it will say you are still eating bread. But by the time you need to be communicators of the word of the Lord, therefore at the age of two your journey should start. Your life on this earth is not of your own, dear brethren. You have been born before the foundation of the world. And John 1.18 teaches, John 1.12 teaches to us, these are one who have been born according to the will of God and if you have been born according to the will of God your work is to do and your meat is to do God's will you do not have compromisation over there the parents should train you up the parents should be trained by the right pastor teachers to know about these things your journey should start by age one the one who has formed you, the one who has given to you and how gracious we are that we have been formed that we have been born in the Christian families and that's one of the right doctrines of those pastors like Baptists. 
who do not understand about this charismatic or prosperity gospel it is alien to them and that is right that is the way how lord secures and that is the way how lord makes us to be born into that family and being born into that family lord knows how to secure us not just involving ourselves in the charismatic movements of miracles healings or running back upon the prosperity gospel and when we have a right and true desire to the lord to teach us certainly he causes us to know that and whenever we come learn to the word of the lord we learn it as if we do not know anything every day is a new revelation every day is a freshness of oil as per numbers 11 8 what we have read yesterday the spiritual manna every day is fresh the mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit every day is fresh And Lord God, the Holy Spirit doesn't stop you to think. I will depend upon yesterday's experience. No. Today, something new. Every second is new for you. Every minute is new for you. Every breath is new for you. You cannot say, I will depend upon yesterday's oxygen. Today, I don't require oxygen. You cannot say that. Or you will say, yesterday's food is enough for me. Today, I don't require fresh food for my flesh. What do you do? You go upon to look upon which is fresh, which is constantly new. And dear brethren, this newness which we have been experiencing every day till to the point of our death, if not till to the point of millennium rule, which could be finished, you cannot complete this word. Do you know why? Because it is the power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, giving for us in multi-dimensional upon each and every word to teach to you and time fails us. That's why our Lord has been using before the foundation of the world. The spirit is the same. Even after millennium when you enter into the new Jerusalem and the new heavenly temple, the mental ministry of Lord God, Holy Spirit is the same. Some ages might have gone. And it uses certain men to train or to be trained faithfully to teach to you all these things. And the spirit is the same. And then too, do you think it is going to complete? No, there is much for us to communicate. And in general summarization of the word of the Lord, not just standing for moralities, but rather looking upon to understand the word directly upon Bible doctrine, our Lord has given for us this mystery doctrine of the church age. And he has told for us what are the divine Christian principles. And he has told for us what it is to go back, not only just to consider about the mystery, but live and look upon the use of beyond principle, godliness in Christ. Much is given for us and much is expected from us. Then you may ask, then you are to stay here for a thousand years. No, every breath you take which is new in the sight of the Lord, it renovates you to think what is there more so that your mind could be adjusted to the thinking of Christ. Therefore, your journey begins at age one. Your parents should guide for you. Therefore, Lord has instigated this divine institution number one, two, three and four so that parents, then family and then in family, which has been there under the care of a right pastor teacher, he trains the parents so that the parents could in return train the children when they sit, when they sleep, when they walk, when they do all the things pertaining to the Shema of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Train them the word, bind upon their heads. Because this word is enough for us to be in our mind and nothing in this world can compromise. And nothing in this world has been required for us. The world has what? Cosmos Diabolicus thinking. The human viewpoint sophisticated into their realm of philosophy, love of wisdom. And they turn out to become philanthropists. They turn out to become moral advisors. They turn out to become legal advisors. Extreme asceticism they look. And what do they find at the end? They find nothing happiness in Christ because they hate Christ. Many lessons as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherewith we have to follow to become one flesh in Christ because our Lord said they both become one flesh in Ephesians 5, 29 and 30. They both become one flesh which is a mystery but I am now speaking about Christ and the church. When we Christ and the church become one flesh then what our Lord should nourish and cherish certainly to the church it has to be according to his soul. It has to be according to his mind. We cannot have a comparison to our mind when things that, that 
that which could be compatible to his mind and thinking that we could be living according to him by our legalism standards, moral ethical standards, Christian moral degeneracy, Christian immoral degeneracy and we can say we are happy with Christ, no way, no chance at all, you are kidding yourself. Lord God the Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord God the Father in his plan has designed something which has to be according to his word and he has placed Lord God the Holy Spirit in you at the moment of salvation being baptized unto his glory. And you have to go through that mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and there is no excuse for you. Or there is no other reason for you. Therefore, every believer has been told to use 1 John 1 9 in the privacy of your royal priesthood and get back and make sure that you are being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And when you are in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, our Lord said He is Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in biblical truth. And that spirit is filling of Lord God the Holy Spirit and in truth. And when you are being there in the filling of Lord God the Holy Spirit and you worship Him in truth, certainly, dear brethren, you need to know you will be living in the spirit and you will be walking peripata or you make your treating in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and when you are making your treating in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit certainly you will walk in light and when you are walking in light and you will use the principle of agairo fallen by Elenco and that is not possible until and unless you first take number one priority for the word of the Lord First, you have to grow up. And that is what half the believer ought to learn from a right pastor teacher in return so that he can train his children beginning at age two not to involve himself in the cosmos diabolicus and not to keep in his mind the thinking of this world though there may be many positive mental attitude books. They may tell the conscious and subconscious mind of difference. They may tell to you to do this and to do that. So that your son can have this. Think positive. Think positive. They may teach you. <laughs> but it has to be learn doctrine. Learn doctrine. So that your thinking can change towards the mind of Christ. And when that great creator who has created us has in our mind. And when, he, when we are mindful of him. Certainly there is nothing that can come against you dear brethren. Satan at least cannot touch in this church age. It doesn't have any authority. The demon possession is possible in the Old Testament but not now. Because every believer's body is a temple of God and Lord God the Holy Spirit has already made an abode. Those who are true believers who believe in the doctrine, not according to the teaching which has been taught for them by their so-called mentors. Because their so-called mentors do not learn the word, do not exegete the word, do not isolate the word. They're, the so-called mentors have not learned rebound straight. They counsel shame for you. They counsel for you vain philosophy. They counsel for you emptiness. And ultimately you went up in vain. And you think that is great for you. Certainly you are losing your true spiritual life. Every believer has his own spiritual life in Christ. This great spiritual life which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ executed in the divine dinosphere of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And he has given us that for us to live, to enjoy, and to look, and to seek, and to dig, and to search. What a pleasure it would be for us to search that word. And what a pleasure it would be for us to ask to Lord God Almighty to provide those faithful pastor teachers who are communicating for you this truth. You weep, agonize, and you take, and you fast, and you pray. For such kind of a pastors that should be sent to you so that you can desire only to have a right and true fellowship with Lord God Almighty so that you can have a great reward in your spiritual life when you appear at the judgment seat of Christ. Seek and learn for such kind of a man. And why do you want to look upon these things? You are called to move from perfection to perfection. That's what we have the word telelios, which means it a goal, a purpose, an adult who is fully grown, a full age, which is an opposite to little children. You are not called for little children to just depend upon your faith rush technique. The childhood life is from stage number one to five of problem solving devices. The first stage is rebound. I'm teaching to you all the minute things about rebound and which is most essential. Without that, you cannot have true fellowship with Lord God Almighty, not at all. Though it is in the basic problem solving device of the flat line of the soul which is a must for you and which is without which you cannot even grow an inch, grow an mm, not even an inch in the spiritual life.
because Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone is a communicator for you. Without the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, this dispensation is no dispensation at all. Because this dispensation is a dispensation of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but voice of the Trinity, the mind of Christ, the word of God. Without this dispensation of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is no righteousness for you. There is no which has been so much essential for you all to think. The ministry of reconciliation. And we have been placed on this earth for a short span of time in order to make sure that we learn the word, grow up in the word, move on for a perfection in adultness, not to be still childhood, not to learn childhood things. We have been given much responsibility laid down upon our shoulders in order to understand. And do you know what? Though there are many videos in the YouTube, people love to think which is dark, dark in the sense which is evil, cacos which is pornia. But they don't love to look which is truth. That is always the same. Therefore our Lord said, strive to enter into the straight gate where few people can come. Not many people will learn. Therefore learning the word of the Lord is of a straight gate. Very few people will strive to enter into it. The phonography which is available in the YouTube today, you can find some lakhs of people subscribers for it. But for the truth of the word of the Lord, you will not even find 12 disciples. Do you know why? The world has been absolutely pleasurable for them, for their flesh. But for your spirit, which has to be through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not pleasurable for you because you go weekly months to the church. Therefore, you don't love the word. But Bible doctrine has been called for us to be every day. They don't believe that things. At what valuable cost they are expending their life. And what the pastor teachers are teaching without showing them the true responsibility in the word of the Lord certainly causes you all still to be not grown up. It is an exact opposite of the children. This image is fully completed growth as contrasted with infancy and childhood. Here we have been called for God's perfection which is being absolute. Man is relative, reaching the goal set for him by God with each individual differing according to his God-given ability. The Telelios is one who has attained his moral end, the goal for which he, has, he was intended, namely to be a man obedient in Christ. The great privilege which you and I should learn in this unique dispensation of the believers, when you are being bought in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, as our Lord was being, our Lord was being driven by the Spirit, says Matthew 4, 4, into the wilderness, but the, Christ, but the Exodus generation was being bought to be into a land flowing with milk and honey, but they lost it. Though they have been fed with the things pertaining to very much essential, which has been called very clearly the manna. Here our Lord was being sent to the wilderness to be tempted without the physical food, yet he was obedient. They, they have been given that physical food and yet they were disobedient. But here Telelios means to say that we need to reach that obedience in Christ. And therefore, dear brethren, it is of a very great privilege and a very great responsibility for us that until as you have been gone in the matter ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot know what is that privilege in Christ placed for us. And certainly, the goal for which he was intended, namely to be man obedient in Christ. It may be other and higher ends will open before him in order to have Christ formed in him more and more when one is Telelios, to be Christ formed in us more and more when one is Telelios. It does not mean that he has had all the grace available bestowed upon him. Perfection, it is not a static state. It is in the physical and literal sense used of spotless sacrifices involving the things pertaining to the perfect work. Therefore, dear brethren, this Telelios which has been given for us is of a great value. It, it, it ought to be done in the manner of great perfection. The word which has been indicating the ultimate part 
or goal in heaven as contrasted with something that can have only partial fulfillment on earth. Therefore, Telelios means what is highest and preeminent. When it is used in a moral sense referring to God's expectation of us, completely blameless. A perfect gift in James 1.17 means that which meets the need of a person. And in James 1.4 it meant to say that you may be perfect means that you may not be morally lacking. It has a similar meaning. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to know holding a connecting link between the holos, whole and holacarias, complete in every part, telelios to the end, it is not to be confused with anamaturias, without sin or sinless. Dear brethren, you need to know these things very gratefully, very cautiously. Telelios, the man who has to be obedient in Christ. Many people do not even know what is their purpose, what is the true counseling in Christ which has been given for them. But many people can't understand. They are still childhood. But the things pertaining to doctrine which has been so great for us, given to us, teaches that get separation not to be as child get separation from your things pertaining to what fellowship you have or what partnership you have with righteousness and lawlessness what communion you have with light and darkness and what agreement you have to Christ and Belial or what part you have as a believer to be with unbeliever and dear brethren this meant to say not that you have to leave them but the point is that you should not follow the life of unbeliever who is already walking in his vain imagination already walking in his vain wisdom of this world already thinking upon vain philosophy of this earth and thinking that to be out of sin and sinless is perfection in the sight of god no you are being called to be a perfect in telelios nature which is of a so great lesson for us to learn that you have to be certainly moving and to be obedience for christ in christ and many people who have ignored to emphasize upon the great lesson which has been given for us in second corinthians 6 16 and then he says what concurrence you have suga cut catathesis the temple of god with idols and you are the temple of god living said Lord God Almighty, that meant to say, you are the living temple of God. Therefore, our Lord said, I shall make my home in them, and I shall be emperipatao, and I shall be of them God, and they shall be, be of my people. Therefore, our Lord says, be you coming out of the midst of them, and you be being served, and be you separate, said the Lord, and defined, that's what, you being severed, is saying our Lord, and unclean thing, no, you be touching, and you shall be admitting such kind of an unclean thing. And our Lord said, I shall be to you, Father, and you shall be to my sons and daughters, says Lord God Almighty. Therefore, dear brethren, until and unless you are being absolutely severed, Therefore, our Lord says in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Having therefore this promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Here comes the word, and the spirit. Therefore, having these great promises, beloved, we should be cleansing catharizon from where the pollution of flesh and the spirit completing that is what when you cleanse the pollution of your flesh and the spirit then you will be moving on to complete the holiness in fear of God without having this fear of God to be looking upon the perfection of holiness in Christ you cannot serve this great Lord God Almighty therefore dear brethren you need to know in John chapter 10 when our Lord was told for them to move upon to perfection they never believed him they said he is a cult they said he has a demon they said he was a man and we certainly quote those verses for you and certainly the verses quote for us in John chapter 10 verses 20 and many of them said he hath a devil and many of them said he is mad why you hear him but others said who have not division with the Lord these are not the words of him that hath a devil can a devil open the eyes of the blind that's what the word which I wanted to tell to you all the main intention of our Lord was to open the eyes of their blind one and certainly by that he wanted to glorify the works of Lord and train them up to be having a witnesses with, with he witnessed anyone who is a thesa beyond and the one who does the will of God Lord God Almighty certainly hears him therefore today when he is physical 
spiritualized were been opened are we learning something to look upon our spiritual eyes though it has been opened to be enlightened that's the great prayer where with apostle paul prays in ephesians philippians and colossians their enlightened eyes might be enlightened more so that they could dig deep and understand what is the true calling in christ that is what dear brethren telelios is all about not about sin not about sinless living it is a life where with you have to move from the true enlightenment calling in the mentor ministry of light god the holy spirit and grow up in his knowledge to great reality therefore and it was a time of a jerusalem in the things pertaining to the feast of dedication it was winter and our lord walked in the temple in solomon's porch then came the jews round about him and said to him how long you make us to doubt if thou be christ tell us plainly certainly by looking upon this deeds in never in the life that's what our lord said in john chapter 9 never from the creation of the beginning of the world any man might have got eyes at least by that instant they would have known what eyes they should have certainly got though the blind man certainly witnessed in the sanhedrin and said that you want to be his disciples that's what he said i cannot again you are listening what did he say for you what did he teach for you then you want to be his disciples then they threw that blind man and they told him that we are the disciples of moses not he hmm. still blindness being hardened today the same thing you still want to be a disciples of those who are having two masters one master being god the other master being devil the whole sin nature the cosmos diabolicus because they want to have each and every partnership agreement fellowship communion and they want to be their followers certainly it is left to you we don't require any result or any answer for it how many days more you want to be dwindling among these two things dancing among these two things they said we are not his disciples they said they are the disciples of moses but not truly the disciples of moses if they would have been the true disciples of moses certainly they would have known who is this christ the messiah likewise today if they are true pastor teachers they would have certainly made them to know what is the true calling in christ in this unique dispensation of the church age the mystery doctrine of christ they would have certainly learned moving on from perfection to perfection moving on to be obedient for Christ and to grow up to become royal priests royal ambassadors and royal kings for him and still they ask doubtly why you are causing us doubt certainly tell us plainly whether you are Christ or not then our lord answers i told you and you believed not the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me the doctrine that which we teach in the name of our lord god almighty to his church bear witness of us and certainly you don't believe in these words but you believe not because you are not of my sheep i said as i said unto you and he says in john 10:27 my sheep will hear my voice and i know them and they will follow me what a great privilege it is to become the sheep of the lord during our lord's incarnation and his presence on this earth how many certainly followed him they were only the 12 disciples the remaining people though they might have followed might have not come openly and even the one prominent disciple apostle peter lives in and i give unto you eternal life and they shall never perish never shall any pluck them out of my hand the believers security in the sight of lord the believers assurance the believers confidence no one can pluck us out far less the people think like the roman catholicism teaching that certainly they should be a saint if not they will lose their salvation certainly they should do this to be saving their salvation is all really wrong at the moment of faith alone in christ alone you are been secured you have been given eternal life and then on it goes on to works what you sow that you reap at the second grace of the judgment seat of christ ignoring the word ignoring the teaching of lord you certainly lose the truth 
And our Lord says in John chapter 10 verses 29, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand as well. And our Lord says, I and my Father are one. Dear brethren, the Feast of Dedication was a ceremony of great importance to the Jewish people. It originated at the dedication of the temple after its destruction by Antiochus Epiphanes. And we require the Jews underwent severe persecution by this ruler. A number of years later, a priest named Matthias led a revolt, later continued by his son Maccabeus, that ended this persecution. Following this victory, the temple in, Jesus, in Jerusalem was cleansed and a ceremony was held to mark its rededication. Jewish tradition records that the oil lamps that were lit as part of this celebration had only one day supply of oil but burned for eight days. Therefore, this annual feast was marked by the lightning of candles and chanting of Hallel, Psalms 113-118, as well as the waving of palm branches. Since the Feast of Dedication was intended as a time of great rejoicing, all fasting and public mourning were prohibited. Our Lord dedicated himself for us, for his church, for his outcalled body in the Lord. How much are we really rejoicing in his mind, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Dear brethren, this is your life. Ignore the word. Consider this world has greater thinking in you than the mind of Christ you can enjoy. We are not forcing you to be in the word of the Lord. Until and unless Lord gives you that desire, that's what we find in 2 Timothy 2.26. Until and unless you desire for the truth and you want to stand a witness for the truth, there is no certainly for you to think, to consider that you can grow up. And how can Lord desire give, to give you that truth until and unless you make a chance to come back and to look and to think where you are, why you are, what are this earth? And why are you being placed in this unique dispensation of the church age? All these things you need to learn, dear brethren. Time is too short for us. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large because we have the greatest privileges of large one. But along with those privileges comes a greater responsibility. And along with that greater responsibility, it is being a pastor teacher, it is much more burdened responsibility, masa. And many people don't understand what is that much more burden responsibility in Christ. They are just spending their times in useless and worthless speculations. And how they will be standing at the judgment seat of Christ, it is left to them. If they are not getting separated from lawless ones and to become true righteous ones, if they are not separating from darkness and enter into light, because we have been called the children of light, therefore we need to walk in light. And how come they can make the temple of God to be the temple of Belial? You cannot. And what agreement does Lord has with the one which is not his part? That is unbelievers. Your first work, starting at the age of one, train up your children till to the age of 14 to a great extension so that they can learn the word, consider the word and think of the word. And certainly after that what? After growing up in the word, what do you do? You certainly make them to write by the age of 14 the Bible, to be acquainted, to be perceived. And therefore we need to be having no spot in the flesh as well as in the spirit. As the believer fears and obeys the commandments of Lord God Almighty, certainly he will not fall into adultery, he will not fall into prostitution, he will not fall into each and everything which is against the mind of Christ. And since our parents don't desire for truth and they don't go to the right pastor teachers, they themselves are not aware because they are much needed to train them up in this worldly wisdom and they are not aware about the spiritual wisdom which has to be feared. They will think weekly ones is enough for them. Why we have to stress them so much? So that when they are being trained by the age of 25, the remaining life it could be worthy of true happiness in Christ to cherish and nourish in his sufferings because we have been called not only to believe him but also to suffer for his sake. 
And that is not possible for a believer to start up at the age of 30 or 40. By the age of 25, he has to complete. And he has to be thoroughly prepared. King Alfred gave the great mandate in year 809 AD to tell, you do not engage any youth into your work until first he graduates in the word of the Lord so that he should work in a reality that is serving the Lord. What a privilege it would be for us to have that great rule among the midst of this people today in the evil Christendom. But what they are doing? They train them up to become their sons and daughters to be doctors or engineers and I don't deny it is not required. It is required but not to such kind of a great extension at the cost of the spiritual life. This earthly wisdom will vanish off. Whatever you have on this earth, what you have, it is going to leave this earth. You came in the form of the flesh and you go back in the flesh. No, you go back in the spirit and soul. That spirit has to train up in the soul. Those two things are there with you permanently tomorrow, not your flesh. Your flesh goes back to the mud from where it came. But the one which is residing in you, the soul and spirit will come back to you and they have to go back to the Lord and with which intention he has made the soul and spirit, certainly it has to reach that growth. And if it has been like immature babies, if it has still been not able to understand that your soul doesn't have the impressions of the word of Lord, then certainly you have lost your time and your privilege on this earth. Therefore, dear brethren, today the Christian's privilege of having impact as an invisible hero is been absolutely infringed. Many ministers neglect the responsibility to teach their listeners Bible doctrine. What they are teaching instead of Bible doctrine? The kleptes crowd, the lestes crowd and the misthotes, hired shepherds are just worried weekly income what they are going to get or monthly income what they are going to get. Kleptes silently takes away your spiritual life. Lestes violently takes away your spiritual life. Divisions, divisions, divisions. And what privilege you can have when you are having fellowship with unrighteousness. Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not happy. It has been grieved and squelched. And when Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not controlling you, then what privilege do you have? Nothing. You are wasting your time. Though you may be thinking you are living a true life of cosmos diabolicus or you may be thinking that you are living a true life of self-righteous attitudes or legalism. But at the end, where does it go? It goes for 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. Nothing of any spiritual significance in it. The number one priority, rebound. Every word that you speak, it has to be in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It has to be rebound. Every word that you learn, it has to change your course of direction of life for an eternal meaningful service in Christ. Because you are heavenly aristocrats. Much is given for you in this church age and much is expected for you from this church age. And once you depart from this earth, you cannot come back once again in the flesh. Before you can depart from this earth, make use of your flesh to the maximum glorification for God. Not that when you get sickness, not that when you go wrong against the principle of God and waste your life. You have to know very well, dear brethren, by the age of 25, every believer ought to be a mature man. And that mature man of a wicked, uh, the mature man of a one in this world has overcome that wicked one only when the word of God abides in him, abides in him, abides in him. Our parents might have not desired to give you this teaching. Because when they fail to go to the right pastor teacher and the right pastor teacher who has this bona fide gift, who has the bona fide gift will train you up in these terms. He digs the truth and tells how many people will be perishing. It is not that at the end of your life you are going to change to become a mystery doctrine believer or you are going to become the Eusebian believer. No, he starts to put that seed right from the birth. So that the kid should know by the age of 25 he has learnt doctrine and has grown up to be mature to handle anything that goes against the knowledge of God and pull it down. That is what how they have been trained up, how they have to be trained up. But who has to train them? The responsibility for parents. From where the parents should learn? From the pastor teacher, from the church they go. And from where the pastor teacher should learn, if he has a true bona fide gift, he has to learn from a constant study. The only degree what he has to have is A-U-G, A.U.G. Approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2.15. That is what his degree is all about.
His graduation is all about. His authority is all about. His consideration is all about. Approved unto God and the right authority. The cosmos diabolicus men may have several 140 degrees which one of the serial note in National Geographic Channel was telling in my country India in the state of Tamil Nadu. A man says he has 140 graduation degrees and post-graduation degrees or diploma of post-graduation degrees as well. And he says if you come after two years or ten years you will find crossing my degrees to 200 or 300. Who cares about those things? The only authority and degree which you should have as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and if you are a true pastor teacher it has to be AUG approved unto God. What test our Lord keeps as a documents or examination you have to pass that. And that passing demands a constant diligent study to present ourselves. A workman approved unto God that needeth not to be ashamed when he comes at the presence of Christ. And since he doesn't come at the presence of Christ with that great approval, because he is a cleftes or lestes or misthotes, hired servant or robber or thief, certainly he will not train the congregation by the age of 25 how they have to overcome the wicked one. The only method for us to overcome that wicked one is to use, dear brethren, you believe it or not, the word of God. By the age of 14, they have to know the understanding of the word. By the age of 25, they have to write at least once upon their knees the entire word. And by that time, they will come to know the need, whether they have in the salvation, the bona fide gift of a teaching or not. Then certainly they go on to write for the second time upon their knees, upon the original languages of the scriptures, and they make their every breath on this earth meaningful. And you believe it or not, our Lord's life on this earth was 33 and a half years. And by the age of 33 and a half years, you have to be thoroughly prepared for his battle. And from the next day of 33 and a half years, it has to be for Christ, because Christ in you, the hope of glory, should live on this earth. Not that you find a crowd, they don't marry till to the age of 33 and then afterwards they try to marry after the age of 33. Some curls were rising so, la so loud. Not understanding the will of God, not training their children to do the will of God. Not being themselves trained to look upon at least once in their life, they should write the Bible as a bona fide gifted for them to be royal kings for Christ. They are not able to understand these things. We are staying in the midst of great apostasy, dear brethren. Heretic teachings are ample to the core. Cults are rising to the core. But we don't have time to waste by speculating them or involved in their specious discourse. But rather we are here to think the mind of Christ which is of a great burden for us to see so many people are perishing without executing this protocol plan of God. They are neither even aware about the mystery doctrine of the church age. They are neither even aware to think about this great use of beyond principle which has been taught for us in 1 Timothy 6, 2-4. If anyone doesn't teach to you all this godliness of this great use of beyond principle, you depart from them. What a privilege it is for us to know these things. After knowing these things, what we do? We are training you up, we are teaching you up. But we do find men don't love to get this in the internet. So what? We not worry. Lord knows for whom these messages have to be recorded and kept. He, he, he keeps it for them. Our work is what? To faithfully divide the word of the Lord and rightly teach the truth. That's our work. And we don't have any other work apart from that. Under the great principle of this earth to live if I wouldn't have had this bona fide gift, maybe I would have not entered this earth. I would have asked Lord not to send me. And I am telling you ironically these things because there is no important thing on this earth than to study the word of the Lord and to teach the word of the Lord. I have just told you that in order to think of your imaginations, to consider that every believer before an eternity past, our Lord has designed for us to be greater communicators. That's what Hebrews 5.14 is all about. By the time you need to be communicators of the word. And with this true bona fide spiritual gift of a pastor teacher, we cherish and nourish in his word every day. 
It is not that I alone keep, but rather in return edify you by thinking you all to put, though this man is not alive on this earth, he certainly his words are alive for you on this earth. The words of Lord God Almighty which will be the same from the beginning of the creation even until the end of this human history, whichever manner it may go. His words are a witness for us to be left on this earth as a true bona fide spiritual gift man at the same time to honor his word above his name. But today, rather than Bible doctrine, they go at them to become involved in emotionalism, personality cults, church programs, social work, political activism. Trends in today's Protestant Christianity show signs of an imbalance which emphasizes the visible at the expense of the invisible, the material at the expense of the spiritual, the believer's overt image at the expense of the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine to his soul. Overt image at the expense of the inner dynamics of the Bible doctrine in the soul. We find today overt image people much, emphasizing to tell, be neatly shaved, wear good dress, look good. I don't deny those are required. They are required to look neat. But that doesn't the way how Lord looks. Lord looks either you are being with the excreta garments or with the Righteousness garments. If you are in excreta garment, it meant to say you have not used rebound. And when you are communicating, it is nothing but the smell which comes out. But Lord wants every believer and to be the particularly pastor teacher in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because when he is in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, he makes sure that the congregation will be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And when the congregation is in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, he makes that the congregation is not counted to be sinned in the sight of God. As we have learned yesterday, the Akan. And Lord says, because of that one man, Israel has sinned. The congregation where this pastor teacher resides, though they are not thousands or multiples of thousands, though they are only two or three, he makes sure that this congregation is outcalled for God. And certainly he makes sure that they are in the fellowship of Lord God Almighty so that Lord could count that they are not in sin. The pastor teacher may be in fellowship. The congregation, if it is not in fellowship, Lord calls that church is out of fellowship. It has sinned. Therefore, this pastor teacher makes sure that everyone are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And it is of a great privilege for us to learn that when we learn in the matter of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for the greater glory of God, we have much things to do. We have much things to take. We have much things to consider for His glory. Dear brethren, make sure not your overt physical activities, your physical appearance are greater in the sight of God than the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine when you learn to your soul in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Your inner dynamics. This problem takes roots because of the ignorance of the great knowledge of, of dispensations. If you don't have the knowledge of dispensations, you can never know that this is a dispensation of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. As our Lord was being told by them that you will not believe me, so the congregation will be if they don't believe the doctrine of dispensations. They will not know that they have been changed. Whenever if you pray to the Lord, you are going to pray to say, Father, because now the relationship has been changed. You are the royal family of God. This privilege was not been given in the past. They would address Jehovah in the previous dispensations. But now we are being termed out to be fathers. But we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in return, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because you should know this Trinity is one, and that Father resembles to the one who is Jehovah again in the past dispensation. And many people don't understand these things. They do not believe about Trinity. They do not believe about the Word of God, the mind of Christ, and the voice of the Spirit. They believe what the things they are understanding in the energy of their flesh. Not to have a divine overall viewpoint in Christ. Just to have lustful patterns of their thinking. It is of a very great shame, dear brethren, to know that what we ought to be by taking the right counsel of the mind of Christ, we are not. 
but they counsel you shame, destroy your soul. And when they appear at the judgment seat of Christ, they are answerable to God, not we. What you sow that you reap, every word that you speak, it has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The overwhelming majority of Christians do not know today what God has provided for them or why he has given them so much. After salvation, what? What does God desire the Christian to do? If believers do not realize that they belong to that great royal family of God, how can they fulfill their destinies? How can they execute the protocol plan of God for the church age? If they do not know such kind of a plan really exists, ignorance undercuts every good intention, dear brethren. No matter how a Christian desires to make his life count for God, if he is ignorant of God's plan, he fails to glorify God. That's what he fails to glorify God. He fails to honor his word above his name. At best, the impact of his life is fleeting, no sooner achieved than dissipated. At worst, his impact is for evil, as he inadvertently struggles in Satan's cause to improve this devil's world. That is what it is happening today improving this devil's world rather than improving his own spiritual world in his own divine dinospheres. It is of a very great pain, dear brethren, to teach to you all these things. Though the reformation movement has brought us to understand about the royalty of priesthood, it certainly failed to emphasize that which is much required because of this great doctrine given for us in this church age they have really not taught because maybe they have not have time enough to really delineate the Christian experience, if not the Christian way of life, which have to be much more clearer to Christians today than in the past darkness of late medieval Roman Catholicism. Because we have Bible in our hands and Lord faithfully gives for every generation the faithful pastor teachers who are here to communicate the truth. But the problem is with the congregation who do not desire to give that communication for that mental ministry to us, Lord God the Father, to provide you those shepherds who shall feed you with, with teaching and with understanding, with wisdom and with understanding. The AUG, approved unto God, is not there today. Therefore, we find the cleptest crowd, the lestest crowd, misthoughtest crowd, and not ideal shepherds, ideal poiman, whose duty is to feed, feed, feed. He changes your mind in your thinking not to be conformed to this world, but rather he renovates and he gives that great renovation according to the word of God, says Romans 12, 1 to 2, so that you should become a living sacrifice unto Christ. Present your bodies in flesh and spirit and in soul, blameless, says 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to Christ. And in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, when we are being there spotless in the flesh and spirit, then our Lord God the Father will be our Father and we will be His sons and daughters. What a privilege it will be for us to have that great fellowship with the one who is walking in the light. What a privilege it will be for us to understand the responsibility which has been laid down upon us when we walk in the light. Isn't it great for us? Or you still want to live in the same old darkness of late medieval Roman Catholicism. Emotionalism and empty rituals which are dominating the churches today. Mysticism which supplants objective knowledge of Bible doctrine. Good deeds which are being taught as an approach to God. Morality is distorted into legalistic elasticism and is being preached as a substitute for Christian virtue. Christian service is enforced through guilt, fear, penance, doubt concerning in one's own eternal status quo, or false hope of divine blessings. Political activism precludes divine viewpoint thinking, and there are endless schemes to raise money. This is what they are teaching today for you in the churches. These age-old practices which the Reformation did not eradicate squander the great spiritual riches that God has given to every church-age believer. Great spiritual riches. The legalism that emerged from the Roman Reformation may differ in specifics from Roman Catholic legalism, but it is just as ineffective in defining post-salvation Christian life on this earth or post-salvation Christian experience on this earth. Therefore, the doctrines of dispensations is among the basic doctrines which every believer must comprehend. 
the believer enables us to recognize the biblical mechanics for the Christian way of life. Dispensations clarify the truth that the humanity of Christ established the pattern for us. Jesus being our author and perfecter of our doctrine, he pointed the protocol plan of God which he tested and proved the prototype of the divine dinosphere and he has given for us the model not only to enjoy in the great prototype prototype divine dinosphere which he has enjoyed at the same time given upon our shoulders the great responsibility to become the prototype to become royal kings and royal priests as per Zechariah 6 9 through 13 which our Lord will take care in the millennium that what we have to do now the prototype and he will be the model for us in the future we have to execute the kingship. We have to execute the royalty of priesthood. The royalty of priesthood to confess our sins. The royalty of kingship to write at least once the Bible upon our knees if needed. If we can have that energy. Dear brethren, we are united with Christ forever. And the believer's assurance which we found in John chapter 10 verses 27 and 28. No one can pluck out from Lord's hand. At the same time, no one can pluck out from my Father's hand, saith our Lord. You have been so much secured. You have been so much given much. And much is given for you and much is expected from you. And you cannot waste your time in useless and worthless things. Be very careful about these things. Your life, your grace, everything is valuable. Everything is accountable. Everything has to be taken. Every minute, every breath, every second is for MGG to the Lord. And it has to be for MGG to the Lord. If it is not an MGG to the Lord, then certainly you are using it in vain. And how you can say you are using it in vain? Because you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what you do? You go on to think upon mysticism. You go on to think upon emotionalism, empty rituals, legalism. And you go on to think upon morality, legalistical asceticism. And you substitute it as a Christian virtue rather than the highest virtue for a believer for a Christian believer who, who is a true believer is to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine dear brethren consider and think over these issues life is too short we must learn Bible doctrine much more than needed for us the rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting and if you all think you have better knowledge than this you all can go I don't deny the mentor minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, until unless it works through you all, you can never understand what is the truth. Until and unless you desire to learn the word of the Lord, you will not be taught this truth as well. So enjoy to become royal ambassadors, royal priests, and make your life a meaningful service. Only you can understand and apply his word. He will, Our Lord will stimulate our own desire to know him more and more. Lead us into eternally meaningful service and lift us above our sufferings. And he will create an impact with our lives that will resound throughout time and eternity. Our royal destiny is to become invisible heroes at the most, in the most intense and challenging dispensation in the human history ever given for us. It demands only suppression, 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 truth from lies, righteousness from lawlessness, light from darkness, suppression, suppression, suppression. If you have not been separated at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, because every believer at the moment of salvation is being buried into Christ, therefore when he wakes up, he is waking up in the newness of life so that he should walk according to his truth, then you are not living that life which has been given for us. So think over these issues and consider these matters as we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our headboard and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life, inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season out of season because of the damage from my witnesses you have been called. Number one, I am after my witnesses into the Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. Number two, hearers. If there are no hearers, they will not worry besides nature. The entire angel will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to faithfully, rightly divide the word of truth. So which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for this great privilege that was given to fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit challenges these things so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Lord might be glorified and your word above your name should be glorified. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these things. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.